the wonderful world of scary ass shit too. The Blue Dick Ghosts of Mount Tecora by Von Ashby. Narrated by Sarah Vine. The car glugged away as Gabe squeezed the handle for the gas pump. They'd been on the road for a few hours and Monaghan, having downed several coffees from work before they left, was visiting the little lady's room in the less than desirable gas station. She'd driven them and they'd use her car, so he volunteered to pay for gas. Though until this moment, he wasn't even 100% sure he owned a car. He vaguely felt like he had parked something in an underground parking of his building, but for the life of him, he couldn't remember what it was. The gas pump clicked and he pulled the wand from the car and put it back in its little holder. As he did, he noticed the mountains in the distance for the first time. In a strange way, they reminded him of the beach back home. Sure, they weren't the same physically, but the way they had made him feel was the same. The calm and the surrealness of them helped him focus and remember that there were bigger things in this world than him. The bell of the gas station door broke his zen as Monahan made her way back to the car. She tossed him a chocolate bar, but being distracted, it just hit him in the back. Hey, you okay? Monahan asked. If you don't want the chocolate, there are some pancakes and a Tupperware container in the back seat. Yeah, I'm fine, Gabe replied as he bent down to pick up the chocolate bar from the stained pavement below. You've been to this park before? And pancakes really aren't an eat-in-the-car food. Brightness? No, never. You? Yeah, I think so, but not for a while. Sweet, you want to drive? I haven't eaten anything, and I got this delicious-looking chili dog from in there, and I feel like I might kill us or at least break a few laws if I eat it while I'm driving. Gabe laughed. You bought a chili dog from a gas station? My dad used to. Shit. Is it really my dad? Anyway, the memories I have are telling me my parents used to get us gas station dogs on road trips. We called them road dogs. Yeah, that doesn't make them sound any less disgusting. Wanna bite? Monahan asked him as she pushed past him to climb into the passenger seat while unwrapping her chili dog. Gabe took one last long look at the view, snapping a picture of it with his phone and sending a copy of it to Dossie, his boyfriend, along with a message letting him know where he was. Normally on his work trips, he never sent Dossie anything. The less he knew, the better. But this was different. And Gabe, for some reason, felt compelled to let him know. He did it with his wife, Theo, before, so why not here? That smells disgusting, Gabe said as he sat himself down in the driver's seat and adjusted the wheel. I think I'm getting diarrhea just from the odor. Well, if that's the worst thing that happens to you today, I'll think I'll count that as a good day, Monaghan laughed. The drive to Brightness Falls National Park was only another hour after they stopped for gas. They'd listened to a few of Dahlia's podcast episodes along the way. They were surprisingly exceptionally well-produced, which caught them both off guard. They knew Dahlia had been popular with a podcast, but the level of quality was off the charts. She also had a knack for making everything seem so real, so personal. They passed through the park gate and started towards town. Their plan, which they'd come up with once they were out of podcasts and chili dogs, was to talk to the local law enforcement. They figured there had to be a search group they could join, or at least they could aid in the investigation and hope they let them tag along. The first thing they passed after the park gate was a motel with no business calling itself, well, anything. It should be a pile of debris that people pass by hardly noticing it. This building looked like nothing good could possibly ever happen there. The name didn't help either. The Bottom of the Lake Motel. I think we stayed there, Gabe said as they passed the motel, unable to take his eyes from it. And you didn't have your soul sucked out and shoved up some hairy guy's ass? Monahan said with a grin, good for you. Thanks, was all Gabe could get out because he couldn't exactly remember what had happened there. The memory seemed blurry. He had been drinking or a cat sprinted across the road, narrowly missing the car's tires. Gabe swerved. Luckily for Monahan, the chili dog was long gone. Gabe glanced in the rearview mirror, but he saw nothing. That was good. There would be a not so cartoon splatter on the road if he'd hit it. The road opened up to the rest of the town as they continued down the highway. A gorgeous lake on the left, town on the right. A boardwalk complete with tiny shacks selling all kinds of crap littered the walkway. The town looked pristine and built for tourism. Everything was clean and had the words Brightness Falls in their title somehow. But the further they got from the lake and the boardwalk, the more the polish of the town wore off. Three blocks from the lakefront, paint was peeling off the houses that looked more than a hundred years old and had never seen a hint of repair.
Hey, my name is Von Ashby. I wrote this. If you liked what you heard, head on over to vonashby.com slash free and pick up a free novel or a bunch of other free stuff. Go explore the Aurora Wasteland yourself at aurorawasteland.com. Don't forget to check out the Stories from the Wasteland podcast and search for Von Ashby on YouTube for video versions and other exciting videos. Thanks for listening.